hello. Well, hello. Is this Ruben? Yeah. Hi. Is this Ruben from the band Unknown Mortal Orchestra? Yeah, it is. Hi, this is Scott Wood from The Interview Show. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you tonight? Pretty good. You sound a little bit tired. Yeah, I'm kind of tired. I've just been writing, writing new stuff and staying up at, at night. I think my day's a little bit harder to get through. Well, that sucks. Hopefully you got some good songs today. Yeah, it's been going really good. I'm going to have a, a lot of time, I think, to make the next record, but I'm kind of excited to get started um, straight away and just like have a lot of material to work with. All right, so Ruben, today I was looking at your Twitter, and you tweeted that you just wanted to pretend that sex doesn't exist. So I have to ask, <laughs> what? I've uh, been getting attention from girls, and, and it's sort of like, at first it's like flattering and cool and stuff, but the bigger the band gets, the kind of the more creepy it can get, and, and then at some point I just kind of snapped and just kind of felt this this feeling like I just don't know I just wish sex didn't exist <laughs> I just kind of kind of creeped out by some of some of the attention I was getting and and I was thinking that I I kind of get kind of understand what it what it must be like just to be an ordinary cute girl and get harassed and I always wondered you know as a guy I was always thinking like that'd be great what's what's the problem why do girls think that that's such a bad thing all the time I was thinking like yeah people are kind of creepy and kind of weird and their language can be really strange and they kind of talk to you in a in a way that's just too too forward and yeah i just kind of like got to the point where i just kind of snapped and that was kind of describing the way i felt felt uh, the way the way i feel at the moment about about that subject i mean not to mention the fact that i'm married and stuff as well so it's kind of a, it's a bit unwanted kind of attention you know I completely uh, understand, and I hope that after this interview, you find some good kind of sexual attention. <laughs> no, thank you. Hi, this is Ruben from Unknown Mortal Orchestra, and you're listening to The Interview Show with Scott Wood. Hi, this is Ruben from Unknown Mortal Orchestra, and you're listening to The Interview Show with Scott Wood. Welcome to The Interview Show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You've just heard Swim and Sleep Like a Shark by Unknown Mortal Orchestra. 
you might know them as UMO. I've got Ruben on the line here with me. Ruben, I'd love it if you could talk a bit about this track. Someone Sleep Like a Shark was a song I wrote. It was sort of around the time that the first album was being written and the chords were all different and I always liked the lyrics, but I didn't really think the song was really anything that special. But then I completely changed the guitar line and made it a lot more intricate and spent some time on it. It was kind of uh, supposed to be about um, wanting to escape and on some level. And I think people relate to it a lot more than I, than I thought they would. I thought people would be like, this is a really weird song, but I think people really understand it, which is pretty cool. So, UMO, it was born from a time in your life where you nearly left music, so I'd love it if you could talk about that time a little bit. Okay. I was in New Zealand, and uh, it was just a weird time. I was still really active and working really hard and stuff and, and doing shows and um, recording and writing and stuff, but I just felt kind of like I was the only person in the band that really wanted to, to really do it, do any work. Um, I just felt like I was I could be doing something creative that I could get more out of, you know, I was feeling really childish about being in a band. Like there's like a there's a lot of bickering and stuff that goes on sometimes in a band and um, so uh, I went back to I quit the band and moved back to Portland and started trying to do something else that wasn't music. Now, I just want to jump in here. For those who don't know, the band was called Mint Chicks and you guys were a punk band and you were fairly well known in New Zealand. Yeah, we did pretty well there and I was making a living doing that over there and we won awards and we had a gold record and all this stuff and we put out like four records so it was good while it lasted you know like we kind of had a peak and then and, and then we were faced with this concept of like uh, being creative and, and having nobody really care or kind of selling out and becoming really commercial both of those options sounded pretty bad to me I was reading an interview today where you said that the project UMO was born out of self-loathing and that you destroyed your ego until the point where you were completely broken. That sounds awful. <laughs> it wasn't really that bad. It was a nice, it was a good thing. The Metrics were kind of really important because we were we were one of the few bands that kind of started at, at, at uh, like playing house parties and, and, and free punk shows and stuff like that and actually built from that into, into like the mainstream like directly, organically, without be, without any kind of, um, anybody kind of telling us what to do. So we had this kind of credibility and people took us really seriously. And, and then it was just nice to escape that really. And then come to Portland and be kind of um, anonymous. And uh, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a good thing. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. It's not a bad, like ego death is not a bad thing. <laughs> Hi, this is Ruben from Unknown Mortal Orchestra, and you're listening to The Interview Show with Scott Wood.
Hi, this is Ruben from Unknown Mortal Orchestra, and you're listening to The Interview Show with Scott Wood. All right, welcome to The Interview Show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You just heard So Good at Being in Trouble. That's off two by Unknown Mortal Orchestra, sometimes known as UMO. I've got Ruben from the band here on the line with me. I'd love it, Ruben, if you could talk a bit about that track. There was a, a party, a hotel party that we, we had, and there was a girl that showed up. She was just talking and talking and talking. She maybe ranted for like four hours or something. She'd moved from the south. She was really pretty, and she kind of had, had gone to L.A. to kind of make it, and she was talking about her like hard luck story about being really rich and coming from the south and then going to L.A. and not being able to get anything going. And, and uh, at one point she said, I don't know, I'm just so good at being in trouble. And as soon as she said it, I like turned I sang it, the hook from the song straight away. It just like it just immediately turned into a song for me. I just thought it was a really good phrase and then I was like, Oh no, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have sung that because I was think, thinking, you know, there are other songwriters in the room and they were all gonna take that line but nobody really noticed it. But for me the the song the line like stuck in my head and I kind of immediately knew that I'd basically written a single from the next album, you know, like just from her saying that. So I was kind of like, you know, it was a nice, like, kind of present. <laughs> it's like a gift. So partying does pay off. <laughs> yeah. So UMO, it was born from a time in your life where you nearly left music. So I'd love it if you could talk about that time a little bit. I was in New Zealand and uh, it was just a weird time. And then it was just nice to escape that, really. And then come to Portland and be kind of... Um, Anonymous. So you left your home country, you left your band, you left what you were doing. Somehow you find your way back to music. So what made you decide to just start up again? I was working for a film production company. Um, I started interning there just because, uh, I, you know, I got to Portland and I thought, like, I've got to do something. Worked really hard as an intern and then, uh, and then started getting paid. And so, like, everything was looking really good. I felt really good about where I was. I, I sort of started thinking that it might be nice to start recording again just as a uh, just as a hobby I guess I had this idea I was going to make a psychedelic record and you know I didn't really think I was going to show anybody uh, after a while like after doing a lot of different stuff I, I, I made this song called Funny Friends and I thought it I thought like uh, you know somebody else might want to hear this so I sort of started a band camp and quickly came up with a name to call it and put the track up and and sent it to sent it out to like two blogs um, that I've been reading lately and then just forgot about it and then, so I was at I was at work somebody a couple of computers down funny uh, suddenly a funny friend started playing out of somebody else's computer so, and I recorded the song about five days earlier or something and at first I thought that's oh, my song and then I thought hang on wait a minute so I went over to the computer and I said how did you, where did you get this I didn't tell anyone that I was even making the music or anything, so it was really, suddenly I realized it was totally impossible for them to have it. And then uh, they said, oh, my friend uh, works for Nylon Magazine. This is some some band that's blowing up. I had to start a, an email account associated with the band camp, and I, I checked out the email account, and there were a bunch of indie labels who emailed me and, and blogs and stuff. They were all asking for more music. Everything opened up from that point. Hi, this is Ruben from Unknown Mortal Orchestra, and you're listening to The Interview Show with Scott Wood.
Hi, this is Ruben from Unknown Mortal Orchestra, and you're listening to The Interview Show with Scott Wood. Welcome back to The Interview Show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You just heard Funny Friends. That's off Unknown Mortal Orchestra's first record. I've got Ruben here on the line with me. I would love it if you could talk about this track, especially because this is the track that really started everything for UMO. When I recorded this song, so many things were going through my head. I was... Um, that, that are really funny to think back on now like I, at one point I thought that it represented the, the real reason why I shouldn't be showing anybody my, my new music I, I thought like oh, well nobody's going to be into this psychedelic rock with, over break beats and then the lyrics I was just kind of like this is basically a love song but instead of being a love song it's like a friend a friendship song and I was thinking <laughs> nobody wants to hear this like, you know, the whole band basically was born out of this um, this song that I spent the whole time I recorded it thinking nobody else was going to like it and it's still kind of um, the song that people consider to be the the ultimate like UMO song it's kind of funny like that life is funny (laughs) Unknown Mortal Orchestra where did the name come from? Uh, I just made it up because I was was that was what I thought it was it was just kind of a joke on um, on what what it was I was kind of making fun of myself because it was kind of this thing that nobody knew that I was making it. Oh, the the mortal part was um, kind of related to that ego death we were just talking about, and orchestra was just a was just a, a joke because it was just me, you know. It was, the, it was like the opposite of an orchestra. It was just one one person, and um, so I don't know. I guess I was just making fun of myself, it's like a kind of another way of saying one man band or something. Wow. It well, was. Well, Although I could have been like unknown loser orchestra or something like that, because that's where I was. Ruben, I'm out of time, but I really have appreciated talking with you tonight, and I really appreciate you taking me through the origin of Unknown Mortal Orchestra. I wanted to end the show on a little bit of a peppier, happier, funny note. You know what I'm saying? I interviewed Vampire when they were in Vancouver. You guys all toured together. You all seem pretty tight. And they told me that if I wanted to ask a funny question, I needed to get you to describe your love of fried chicken. <laughs> Uh, I was eating some whole wings like uh, on the last week of the tour and I had like three of them and the fourth one I just like dumped in the box and said yuck <laughs> I was like and everybody in the van this was like they always had to stop the van so they were like whoa whoa wait what did you just do and I was like oh I just I just said yuck and just dumped this hot wing in there back in the box <laughs> they were just like Jake was like I've literally never seen you even begin to like turn down fried chicken it was proof that uh, we'd been to, on the road a little bit too long because I would, uh, I'd rejected fried chicken so it's pretty uh, pretty important part of my life I'm from uh, <laughs> my mother's Hawaiian and in New Zealand it's like a real like cliche that uh, po- uh, Polynesians eat fried chicken like they'll go to uh, people from Samoa will go to um, to New Zealand and then they'll go to KFC and buy a bunch of KFC and take KFC on the plane it smells like KFC in the in every plane ride from from Auckland, New Zealand to Samoa, <laughs> because these families will bring back KFC to their families. It's really weird. All right, well, Ruben, thank you very much for coming on the show tonight. I appreciate it. At the end of the show, I like the guests to pick one of their tracks and talk a bit about it as I bring up the music. The first track on the the, the new album is called "From the Sun." I started um, recording "From the Sun" in New Zealand, and uh, my brother's girlfriend. Is um, is really famous in New Zealand. She's like a household name. Her name's Bick Runger. She had this um, really old Martin guitar from the '60s. She said, "You should try this. You might be able. You might get a song out of it." And she said, "There's a. There's a I think there's a lot of songs in this guitar, which is really. I've never heard anyone say that. Yeah, that the you know like the songs will come out of a guitar." And I don't really. I didn't really play acoustic. I really like playing it now. I bought an acoustic as soon as I got back to Portland, but she said there are a lot of songs in this guitar, and I started playing it, and I got a song out of it, so kind of like pulled the song out of an old guitar. All right, so we're going to listen to From the Sun. That's the first track on 2 by Unknown Mortal Orchestra. I've had Ruben on the show. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Hi, this is Ruben from Unknown Mortal Orchestra, and you're listening to The Interview Show with Scott Wood. Yes. 
sun You can't get away from the sun If you need to You can't get away from the sun If you need to You can throw away the only